Hi everybody. A few days ago, a Retro Gamers Club member stopped by our office and he dropped off some things to have us look at. Two ColecoVision consoles and Intellivision and some controllers. As part of the Retro Gamers Club membership is if you have a... Basically, we concentrate on ColecoVision, but I'm going to, I told him I'd take a look at the Intellivision also. If you have a ColecoVision that's not working and has an issue, you can ship it to us. We'll take a look at it. If we can fix it easily enough, we'll fix it. If we have to replace any parts, we, we'll let you know. And then you ship it back. The only thing you're going to pay for is any replacement parts. You're not going to pay for any of the time we spend fixing it. So, he brought these by, and he says they're, they work, but they're having issues. They black out and things like that. So, I'm going to put, do a quick overview of these two right here and see what's happening with them. And then we'll, maybe this video or over the next couple videos, repair these two if necessary. I'm also going to pull apart the Super Action Controllers, fix them. And I want to see if I can figure out what's going on with the Intellivision. Now this one has a mod to it. It has the RGB mod. So I'm going to set that one to the side. We'll do, I'll set it over here. We'll do this one first because this one's just a standard ColecoVision console. That's his cable there. I'll check his cable too, but I don't think it's his cable. It's going to be an issue. So what I'll do is I'll hook it up to my system here, and over here I have the power supply on the side. What I use for a power supply is I have an old Atom power supply over here that I use. So we can plug this in there, and let's just turn it on and see what we get. Well, we get a screen, so that's a good sign right there. Let's try a copy of this here and see how this works. And give me a controller. I'll try Crazy Climber because Crazy Climber stresses the video chip, and it also makes a lot of sound. So we can test both sound and video before we open it up and see if there's anything loose in there, if anything's overheating. Interesting. His controller ports aren't working on that one. I think he said something about that. Okay. That port right there is not working. I'm not, yeah, see the controller port's stuck. It's just doing its own thing and I'm not getting any sound. Where am I? Yeah, I'm not getting any sound out of there either. But the controller, I'm getting some sound. So we know the controllers are bad. Somewhere in here, the LS541s are bad. So we'll have to check those out. Mute that. So we'll go ahead and pull it apart and see what it looks like inside. Look for obvious damage signs before we think about having to replace things. Now, pulling these apart, some people have figured it out. It took me a while to figure it out. But pulling them apart is actually relatively easy. You move the seven or eight screws, one, two, three, four, eight screws on the bottom. should be loose also. Okay, all of them are out. Let's see. Oh, we still got one in here somewhere. Blue's still in the hole. Did I miss that one? I missed that one. Okay, that's out. Now to remove these, this front cover has a clip. And this old way that I used to do it, and the way some people still do it, is you heat this up and you remove it to get the screws out of here. But the other way to do it is just to force this up like so, and then work it off the front. So what I'm doing, I'm trying to clear the lip all around. Sometimes it goes easy, 
Sometimes it gets stuck, but if you just take your time and work it around, you'll see that they come out relatively easy. What it's hanging up on is this right here in this hole. That's what slows you down. But so it comes out relatively easy. Okay, this one is still has the RF shield attached to it. Don't know if anybody's been in here or not. It's possible they have been. There's two screws on the top RF shield. And depending on the shield, sometimes, okay, this is very loose. Sometimes the RF shield is also soldered to the control board and you have to remove it. Now, if the controllers are bad, these are the two chips that go bad. But what I'm gonna do first, I'm just gonna do, clean some of the gunk out of here. I'm gonna do a quick cleanup of the switch because a lot of times the switch can cause issues too. And that the full minus five, plus five, and the plus 12 aren't going through. So I'm doing it, getting it down in there and then I'll use the actual switch itself to clean it. There we go. Gee, I'm going to actually remove it out of the case too. Let's get free access to the whole thing. Probably get the soldering iron out and get this RF shield disconnected also. It is dirty. She needs a bath. We'll do that too. We'll give it a bath. Is this no, it's not attached anywhere. So the only attachment point we have is this right here to there. Or did. It just came off. Alright, so now we're not hooked up. That's nice. I know I'll, I'll re-solder that back in, but I normally disconnect them anyways. When I first when I hook them up and then I put them back together. And when you put them back together, they touch on their own. You don't have to solder them in place. But sometimes ColecoVision use this. I think they were trying to I think they just had the RF issue, so they were like soldering pieces here and there to try to hold it together. I mean, something as simple as this. This you want to you want to ground the RF shield. So they brought this all the way over to here. Why I don't know. Why didn't they just bring it to here? Or why did they even bother at all? Because it's already grounded. See, this is going over to this RF shield wire that they put here. It's going to the ground plane, which is back here, which is already attached to the ground plane. So why they did it, God knows. But we got the board out, so let's give it a shot again with the board out. Let's, let's just do a little quick look real quick. See if I see anything like jumping out at me on the bottom of this board. Nope, don't see anything down there. So let's give the board another go. Let's see if we get what we get out of it this way. Give me the controller back. Put the controller in there. Power supply back here. Get over here. All right, let's see what she can do now. Let's unmute it. Nothing, so that didn't, wasn't an issue. Yeah, see how just all about. I'm not even touching it, and it automatically goes. So we have bad control. We have bad controls here. So what I'll do is. What we're going to have to do is we're going to replace the 541s. When I say 541s, it's this chip right here. Let me just connect everything here. These two chips underneath here. The LS, 74 LS 541s, those two chips right there have to be replaced. One controls one controller, one controls the other, but they also work together. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna re remove both of them, replace them with new, thing, with new chips. Get my table set up here. First thing I'm going to do is I want to remove this, it's in my way, so I'll just disconnect it from there, or from here for now. I'll put it back on later. And then the way I remove these things is I will cut these loose, and that in turn leaves the little legs behind, and then I remove the legs individually, and then we got to replace it with new chips. Alright, so now that the soldering iron is warmed up, we'll go ahead and remove this RF shield wiring. I'm going to take this side here. Alright. Ah! Bit of solder splattered on top of my bald head. That wasn't fun. Okie dokie. Now that that's out of the way, go ahead and just pull this over here to the side. Of it. Oh, and it just comes loose. Fine. If I'd known that. What we're doing next is I gotta clip off all of these pins that are all the legs of these two chips here. And I'm gonna replace them with new ones. So to do that, I take my nippers, I just go down the top of them and clip them off. I'm not cut I'm not going on the PCB, I'm not cutting on the trace or anything like that. I am clipping it off of the chip itself to leave the legs behind. So yeah, see I pulled the chip off and I leave the legs behind. And what I do is now I'll do the other one too, but then I heat up the pinhole and just pull all the legs out and then just clean out the holes. Now, if I had a desoldering iron and a pump and everything else, I could do it that way too. But this works very well, and it's, you only need minimal equipment to do it. I've done it on hundreds of chips. So it takes a little longer, but it does work very well. My cutters are getting, are getting, have gotten dull. So I'm having a hard time cutting a few of these. It normally doesn't take this long at all to get them out. But my cutters are getting ready, ready dull. So now that I got them out, I'm going to be pulling out these little things here, the legs there. What I do is I take, again, you may be wondering, why does he use this kind of equipment? Why doesn't he buy a desoldering gun? Why does he have a big C-clamp? It's because you don't need all of that. If you have it, that's great. Use it. But you don't need all of that to, to do this stuff. You can get by with a $10 Walmart soldering iron and whatever tools you have around. What I do is this is I'll take and I'll put this on this non-slip to stop from going anywhere. Oh, put that over here instead. Now what I'm going to do is I will take my soldering iron and I will heat up each little pin and pull the pins out. It's repetitive but it does work. So 
Sometimes it's easier to heat up the lake first. To get the pin moving so you know where it's at. Other times it's easier to pull the pin. The reason I'm twisting it around is that the pins are bent in the back, so I gotta basically twist it to get it to straighten out. I'm not pulling it as if it's stuck. I got one pin stuck in here. We have to go that. Let's try from this side. Alright, now we removed all the pins in there, except I think there's one still in there. I gotta go from the outside. What I'm gonna do now is figure out which ones I have to clean out. Looks like pretty much all of them have to be cleaned out. I have to now remove the solder out of the holes there. Now to do that, I use another trick again. If you have the tools, use the tools. I don't have the tools, so I have developed little tricks I can do instead. Well, I had the tools, but my desoldering gun is ruined. What I use instead are straight pins. I know, crazy. Straight pins? What do you mean straight pins? Watch, I'll show you exactly what I mean by a straight pin. I take the soldering iron, I put it on this side on the hole to loosen the solder up. I take the straight pin on the other side on the hole and push it through. Wiggle it a few times, pull it back. That one's gone. Next one, I'll do the same thing. Heat the hole up, soldering iron, straight pin through, wiggle it so it doesn't stick to the solder, clean off any excess solder in the end is probably the best way to do it, and take it out. Once I get this one chips done, I'm going to take and clean it all off, get all the loose solder that's sticking out everywhere off of it. So I don't mistakenly hit it with the soldering iron and remelt it back into the hole. Alright, so that one's done. Now what I'm going to do is clean that off. rubbing alcohol and, tooth and a toothbrush. Looks like I got one hole still. Still one hole that's clogged there. Get all the bits of solder that's on the back of it off. But yeah, I got one hole that's still saw clogged. You see it there. Maybe you can't see it, but I can. I'm going to do that one. I must have missed that one on the way when I was doing them. The other thing you can do too is take your phone or a flashlight. The phone is ubiquitous. It does everything now. Shine the flashlight on the other side and just see which holes. So it's the sixth one on the first row. More that it's got solder on the back than the front. And uh, third from the bottom on the first row. Yeah, it's just more solder on the back. Yep, solder in the hole. Okay, so those are done. Now we're going to do the next one.
notice look at all the little solder hairs hanging off the sides of it the, the ones I pulled out try not to hit them again because they'll just melt and go right back in the hole sometimes you get lucky and they just come right off other times they stick to the straight, the straight pin But look at that, all of them are one straight pin. And it looks like I left hairs behind for every one of them too. See all the little teeth or the hairs? Now we're going to break them off, or clean them off. They break off when you clean them. Now I'll take the phone and the light again, shine it through and see. Every hole was wide open on that one. And fourth one down on the second row is not open. There you go, got it that time. Alright, so we're good with that now. We should be. Clean up everything here. Give it another spray down. Make sure there's no loose solder anywhere that could short a crossover. But see if you notice, see how clean they come off? Yeah, you could do just as good a job with a solder sucker. Possibly, probably, no doubt you could. But this is inexpensive. You're trading time for money. That should be tighter than that. Well, it appears I am out of sockets, so I'm gonna have to mount these directly in. It doesn't matter if they're mounted directly in or on sockets. I just like to use sockets anytime I remove a chip because in the future, if somebody has to do it again, they can use, they can just replace it. But I usually do it on the memory chips of these. I'm not too concerned. So I need to put in some 541s. I got a tube of them here. Getting low on these, I see. Well, not too low. I'm down to eight of them. Maybe eight. Eight of the 541s. Yeah, these replacements are 74LF541 chips. Now, when you put these on, watch the markings because they go different directions. So this one goes, the, the Indicator goes in, and the other one the indicator comes out. Bend these down to make sure that they're nice and straight. And we'll try to put this one in. Bend it down a little further. You want these as square as possible. You don't want them sticking out at all because if they stick out, then it's harder to get them in. Again, indicator, indicator, make sure they go the same way. This is the same soldering iron or same style since I replaced them every few months. And solder that I've used to make over a thousand cartridges in the past four years. So it does work. I haven't had any issue with it. And again, you don't need to buy expensive stuff to do this stuff either. Alrighty. So here we go. All in. Let's unplug this and get this out of the way. What we'll do is we will plug this into power, make sure they're not hot from the solder, and see what we get out of it.
Okie dokie. And there's a crazy climber. Oh. Crazy climber cartridge. And let's start her up. Yeah, she went right in this time. So let's power it, power it down. Now I should have, or I could have, done the test with the controller test. I should have done that. That might have helped me figure it out, but I, I already determined that both of them were bad. So, let's just do the controller test, and we'll just test both controllers now to make sure they both work correctly. But I, yeah, I should have done that. If I hadn't known that the 541 can go bad like that, I would have used the controller test. All right, controller one is good. Controller two is good, so the controllers are now working fine. Let's go back and see if we get sound correctly now with Crazy Climber. Because it seemed like I had an issue with no sound or the sound was quiet. But that could have been that the controller was automatically turning it off as soon as I went in there. Turn the volume up so we can hear it a little. Now I should play a song as soon as I go in. All right. So we do have sound now. Climb up. Yeah, see, so you're good there. So, this one is good. So what I'll do now is I'll just clean off everything and I'll reassemble it and we call this one good. Okay, now while the other parts are out there drying. I'm gonna fix this real quick. I'm gonna take my heat gun, turn it down real low. I don't wanna burn it. I just wanna heat up the paper. To the point where I can get it off without tearing it. Like so. Then what I'll do is I'll just reattach it. With, I'll reattach it with some double sided tape that I'll trim to fit the label. I know, why or why not? It obviously it goes with it, so might as well do the right thing and put it on. reapply it where it belongs. There. Simple thing. Now I'm going to clean the rest of this off with Windex to get it nice and clean. I sprayed out the insides already with the sprayer at the utility sink. So let's get the Windex and get started on this and the other parts. Alright, so now we're just going to spray these down with some Windex. And wipe them off. I have rep I make replacements for these fronts, like instance on this one here, in the format it's in the form of the original prototype design. I like them. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this here, take our base. Such. Take and run this through the front. This, let's see if I can tighten this better. Just this way, this. 
Let me do that. That goes in there. Now this right here, this wire, take and put this wire up underneath. You see this little pin right here that holds up the thing? Put the wire underneath and behind that pin. That way it's not doesn't become visible through the top. And this RF shield is taking it off. There. Put this on correctly. Such. Now I'm not going to reattach this because, like I said, it's already attached to every ground around. There's little tabs come up here. Make sure they go in these slots here. Oh, maybe I should put some screws in it first. Screw in the middle. Screw in the back. In the slot, and there's two screws, one here, one there. See, the reason why I, that shielding is not necessary is the screws are connecting all of these things together. They're all getting, t they're touching. There's no reason to have to hook up a wire to connect them to. But I think they just had to do that because back then the FCC was really worried about people interfering with broadcast TV and people's AM, FM radio or AM radio. So these go on next, and now this is where you get to play the delicate part of put, or not delicate, the fun part of putting it back together. This hole right here, that has to go down that hole. So you, that's the thing you got to aim for when you're putting it back together. You want to put it back together the same way you took it off, front first. So get this up underneath here. Sorry, I can't really show you what I'm doing at the same time I'm doing it, but get this front piece right here. This. Get that out of the way first. That's put that up inside for now. Out of the way. Take this right here. Make sure this is under that. Then you can wiggle it until it lines up in place. Watch your plugs. Make sure you plug some up in there. And there it is. Some of them are easier. Some of them are harder. That one was relatively easy to put back together. Let's put the four screws in, or the eight screws. A little. Check the switch. Make sure it's good, and then she's done. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll wipe it down one more time. Then we'll do another test, because you don't want to do all this work and say it's done, and then give it back to somebody in find out that it's not done because a wire came loose or something. So let's just, though there isn't really any wires to come loose, let's just plug it in, give it one more pass, fail test. TV. My battery's off again. And we're good. There we go. So what we did is we just took this one apart, cleaned it, replaced two bad chips. She's good to go for another 40 years. Have a good day.